Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers and thank you for joining us here. We have a lot of outboard fun, that's for sure. You understand. Alright, we're going to get back on this little bitty Johnson 15. Looks like it's got a few issues for sure. Um, but first, I want to say a big happy 4th of July to everybody out there. Now you better be safe when you're lighting off all them sparklers and bottle rockets and firecrackers, wildcats and boom, boom, bang, bang, boom. Be safe out there. And a big happy 4th to everybody. And uh, we got something else we got to do. You're a winner. You're a winner. We got some winners we got to announce here. So, the first one is going to be, and this is for the super clean products that we're going to give away. Um, it's going to go to Eric Forsyth in the beautiful state of Pennsylvania. He said, as did a couple of you, um, anything that had a Tecumseh engine on it, Aska, Game Fisher, um, a whole bunch of them that had basically the old two-stroke lawnmower engines, um, is pretty much what I guess they were. I have had one or two of them come in here and I was not all that impressed either. Um, but And you guys can correct me on this, but I believe for a little while um, Chrysler or Force also made uh, Game Fisher Motors. I, I kind of remember that as as a much, much younger person. I was in Sears, Montgomery Ward somewhere and I came across a game fisher and I said boy that looks like one of those Force or Chrysler's so I think they might have dabbled in the old game fisher realm but uh, yeah the old Tecumish they I had a lot of comments on those with people saying just not that good an old outboard so Eric Forsyth from Pennsylvania and uh, congratulations, you're going to get some super clean products coming to you. So, the next one, and forgive me up front, everybody, if I butcher your name pronunciationis, you understand us. So this one is Sergio Vieira. And he says, here we go again, the force, the force ain't with you. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't with him. Um, he said he had a, a Force 50. Said it was the worst thing he ever, ever dealt with. So, quite a few of you chimed in on the Force, and I'm not so much sure that they were just bad uh, in the design or anything, because I have met people that have had real good luck with them and love them. But, in today's outboard world, when you're doing the vintage stuff and stuff, parts are getting really hard to come by for those. Um, you, you pretty much got to kind of build your own as you go. Um, and I have done a little of that with some of these forces. I remember a force I had in here years ago and somehow uh, I remember I had to put a different fuel pump and if I remember right I used one off an old Tahatsu or Yamaha and, and primed it in there somehow. Plumbed it in there rather. But um, Sergio Viera, um, he said his was so bad that uh, sometimes it had to go through two batteries just to start it. So, uh, I feel your pain, bro. So, he's from the Azores, Portugal. And so, we're going to get him out this beautiful piece of handcrafted Alaskan art. The Bear Paw. So, that's on its way to you. And so, congratulations to both of you folks, and uh, what I'm going to need you to do is right down below, right down there, it says show more. Click on that, and my email address will be on there. And what I want you to do is send me where you want it shipped to, 
and uh, also try and write it just like it should be on the package. That just makes it easier for my local post office folks here. The last time I sent one over to England or something, I had had it written out wrong. So if you would, kind of write it like it's supposed to look on the package, and we'll get that out to you. So congratulations again. All right, let's get back on this little Johnson. I think it's going to be a troublemaker. I sense it. How about you? Let's go. Okay, now what I did was I pulled that T-stat cover, the thermostat cover off there because I wanted to see how well or not the uh, impeller was pumping water through the water pump up into the power head. And it looks like a pretty good bit of flow going into that thermostat area and coming out. So I'm going to bolt that cover back on and see if it runs cool that way. Well, we got somebody pulling up. I'll be right back. Okay, I bolted the thermostat cover back on. Let's see what we get. Seven. That's the bottom at 140. Climbing. Ha ha ha! 
I took the thermostat out, it still runs hot. So, and with the thermostat cover off, it looked like it was the water pump was doing its job, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the lower unit, drop this lower unit, and we're going to look at that impeller and water pump. Anyway, so I'll be back. So I got it in forward gear there, and that gives me a half inch drop down or inch or whatever to get this out, the uh, shift link. Then you reach it. You reach in with me, and I grab it. Okay. And let's get this off. Ooh. Did a bit on the crusty side, eh? Look at there. That ain't the prettiest I ever seen. Did a bit of rust right up in here. All right, let me get my lower units down. I'll be right back and we'll open that water pump up. Okay, let's take this water pump apart. Well, the grommet here where the water tube sticks into, that's not pinched or anything. Oh, yeah. Well, look at there. And this thing was doing exactly that, the way it was acting. Let me show you one. I will paint it out. I'm going to zoom you, and you can see that impeller. As you can see, squish, squish, squish. You can see the impeller, the center portion of the impeller is right here on the drive shaft. Now, when you see this, you've got a couple of options. If they're stuck on there real bad, you can actually take a, guy, a die grinder and make a cut. And uh, I would do it, you know, right, right along that edge there. And then you could pry it open a little bit and then it'll slide off. But most time you can just take a hammer and a punch or something. Something like that, and uh, even a even a screwdriver a lot of times will get them off. But there it comes. Cause I can see my little pin there. Most. There's 
use my little pin. Don't want to lose it if I don't have to. And my little pin. Set it over here with the nuts. So I got me a set of these curved, you see the jaws are curved on these five scripts here. So that way I don't have to tighten up on the drive shaft, I just... You know, so it's still nice and loose. And I'll just see if I can tap it down. And there it is. Inside of the cup really don't look that bad. But this little seal here is gone. I got plenty of those. I don't know why. Let me see what I do. What do I do? That's not too cool. Well, I'll dig that out of there. Like so. There. But overall, the housing looks pretty good. Like I said, the grommet there where the water tube sticks up, that's nice. Nice and pliable yet. Squishy, squeaky, squeaky, squeak. And so we'll just get that top seal. Got my little pin. But here's what people say when they refer to a spun impeller. Squishy, squishy. And again, I know I'll take some flack for it. But, so that goes in there like that. And what will happen is this whole rubber piece will spin like that on the... Uh, on the brass part. It'll slip. And you can see this this impeller shot anyway. The memory set on that is it's gone. It's no good boy Joe. So we'll get a new impeller. The plate don't look too bad. It's one of the painted ones. I prefer the stainless but this one don't look bad. It's not waddle out. When you take these out um, in addition to clean them up I will hit this on my fine wire wheel on my bench wire wheel I'll hit this clean it all up but a lot of times what I'm looking for on these plates is any kind of misshape on this center hole if it's like kind of egg shaped or if there's one side that looks like it's wore down off just one side that that'll, that can cause some problems but this one, it's nice and round. I don't see any real bad deep scars. You're also looking for scars and scoring on the flat surface. But th this one's not bad. It's just dirty. I can clean that up. But we're going to have to get us at least a top seal and a water pump impeller. And I will be back. Okay. So I went and got an impeller, and I'm going to show you something about these impellers. Then I went and got another impeller housing. I could use this one, but this one's already got the rubber grommet, and I find it's a lot easier to get that top seal out. You just take a screwdriver, come in at an angle until it catches, and then tap it up. And don't lose it. Now... There it is. This one's in a lot better shape. And then, and then what I like to do, and you don't have to do this, it's not critical. Then when it ain't critical, why you do it? Habits. I got bad habits. Good habits? Habits. I take a little bit of this RTV black. Ugh. When I can get it to come out the tube, it'll come, it'll come out the tube. Just got to tear the old stuff off. So. There it is. It come. Oh, this tube about done. That's about all you need. I just like that. One, it helps me put it in. And it's just one of them habits, you know. So I put a little of this RTV black. It helps it slide in. So, tap it tit tit tap Then, now, I have said what I'm going to state here before. 
You understand? And I'm going to take some heat for it. You understand? But I don't care. Because I see it with them. With my own eyeballs. Now you see, this is an OMC impeller for this 9915 Johnson. And it's got this non-ferrous brass, bronze, brass, I don't know. One of them colors. Made out of the metal. And I have stated it on my channel before that I prefer the aftermarket cheapo impellers that have the plastic nylon, I guess it would be, hubs in the middle. I have yet to see one do this of the plastic ones. Now the one I'm putting in here is OEM with the brass in there. And the reason why is this is not my motor. If it were my motor, I would be getting one of my, I think they're Stins, um, O'Malley, a couple, couple people make them. But I prefer the, uh, the ones that have the nylon centers. They don't seem to delaminate or whatever you want to call it. Diffusion. That's the conclusion. Um... I just, I have better luck with them. I, and maybe it's because of the type of boating season we have here. They run them in salt water, and that's all we have here is salt water. We have no freshwater landings for, to launch a boat here on Kodiak. So maybe it's the run it in, in salt water for a short boating season, then putting them away and let them set, where that salt gets all in between and does that. And of course, they go to pull it over to some people just do that before they start a motor, even put it on their boat, they'll pull it over. Oh, it sounds good. And maybe the stickiness and that salt from sitting just and breaks it. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't like them. Cheerios. So we've got us a new seal in there. We've got a brand new impeller. It looks all pretty. We got the junk out. I'm going to clean up the drive shaft with my fine wire wheel bench and uh, clean up the plate get me some of the Loctite that I use on these that we use around here in saltwater only which is called anti-seize I don't use no Loctite I'm lucky if I can get them out they'll be all white and powdery so I'm gonna put a little anti-seize on them I didn't lose my little pin yet and so once I get this all ready to go and clean, we'll get back at it. I'll be right back. Okay, I got the drive shaft cleaned up pretty good. Then what I did was put a blob of antices right there on the flat. And I put the little pin there. That'll hold it for me. Now, we take the new impeller. Ba -ba -ba, and slide him on there. Sort of kind. There it is. There. Now it's there. Now we'll stick this back in the lower. Oh shoot. First, we'll put on the plate, and it cleaned up really nice, too. See how nice that cleaned up? So we put that in there first. Then, we stab that. Like so. We'll make sure it turns to drive shaft. Then, I've got my nuts and bolts all anti-seized them. Then we're going to take a little bit of soap, doesn't matter what kind, spray some soap on that. Spray some soap in the cup. It just helps everything slide together. And stick that on there like so and turn clockwise until that seats down. Now, I went and got 
the Loctite that I use for my saltwater motors around here. See right there, it says Loctite, something like that, anti-seize. Because around here, <laughs> well anyway, I put some antisism on my bolt of something. And then I got to get that spruce needle off. See that spruce needle right there? I had to get it off. Get it off. And get it off. It'd help if I put it in the right. Okay. Let's give him a snug, you know. She good as snug. There we go. Now, then I'm gonna put a little anesthes around the side of the where it goes, stabs into the crank. Not on the top. Don't put any on the top. Manual says don't do that because that'll cause it to do some kind of hydraulicy thing, make it hard to get in. Don't do that. So just paint everything up. Oh, do a little Picasso work here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. All right, let me get set back up and we'll stab this in there. It's name that tune. Just slide behind the wheel. How does it feel when there's no destination too far? And somewhere on the way, you might find out who you are. Just slide behind the wheel. How does it feel when there's no destination too far? And somewhere on the way, you might find out who you are. Name that tune. if you have a little skinny screwdriver like that one that way you can get in there and tighten that up the rest of the way like so that. the hell. There we go. She do it. She do it. Okay, now kind of pull it back to neutral and do that. And she's in neutral. Then what I like to do is put a couple of bolts in there and then check my shift. Put one on each side, one in the back, one in the front. And then make sure every, I got all gears. Don't you do that to me. Don't you do that to me. I'm going to go fly what it wants. He's what it want to do. Okay. So, we got a neutral, we got a forward, we got a neutral, we got a reverse. 
So now I'll put the rest of them in, the rest of the bolts, and we'll get it in the tank and see if it still runs 230 degrees. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get to pulling this carburetor off of this thing and uh, but it is getting a little bit uh, long here so I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up and again I want to say a big congratulation to the winners and uh, so again right down below show more that'll be my email address and you winners there send me where you would like your P.O. boxes or address or wherever you would like me to send your stuff to and I'll get that out to you and um, again big happy 4th of July to everybody stay safe folks we'll see you in the next video part 2, 3 wherever we're at on this little chance and, and uh, as always that's a one more hack from Kodiak thanks for watching Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.